Always good to have a team captain aboard here at the DS. We have Case Cook. We'll go straight to questions. Okay, it's Tyler Shaw with KBTX and College Station. Um, first off, I will have to say I've been hearing about the mullets. I'm a little disappointed. Uh, is that something you're going to grow back? Uh, I don't think I'll grow back the mullet. Uh, I cherish the time we had together for those years, but you know, I'm, I'm thinking I might bring out a surprise with my facial hair this season. So. Just be on the lookout for something spectacular. That's all I'll say. We'll go to your left here in front. Case, how are, how are you embracing being here at SEC Media Days, maybe more so than we just talked about it, but more so than maybe in the past? Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really cool to be here, and I'm honored to be able to represent everybody. Um, you know, but today is Thursday, and back in Columbia, it is acceleration day and heavy deadlift day. So I wish I could be back there getting that done. So I know Coach Brinson and the boys on the back row, they're going to get it done for me. But, you know, but it is an honor to be here. Okay, to your right again. Okay, so going into year two with, uh, you know, Coach Drinkwitz, what's the excitement level like around the team? You know, what, what are kind of the expectations? Uh, you know, high energy. Uh, or, you know, we know what to expect from him. He knows what to expect from us. So. We're going out there every day trying to get our work done the best we can and, and really just kind of like he's been saying, close the gap between uh, us and some other schools. So we're working uh, to get up there and we're trying to win as many games as we can. So our mindset when we come in is a blue collar work ethic and we're trying to create an edge. So that's, that's what we kind of, our mindset and our motto is every day. We'll go to your left here on the front row. Hey, Case, I heard, overheard in the other room that you're telling people in the elevator, we're going to bring the juice tomorrow. You know, is that part of that new mindset that you feel this team has, you know, heading into drink second season? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I think it's something that kind of just uh, naturally happened, you know, whether it's uh, in a lift or in a walkthrough or practice, people just get fired up. And, you know, positive energy is contagious, um, and you see it all the time. One guy can have an effect on a group of 30 dudes. He's got high energy. Next thing you know, people are jumping around, hooping, hollering. That's awesome. So I think just bringing the juice, like you said, and having that energy has been contagious. And it's kind of just shaped how we've uh, approached this offseason. We'll stay here on the left in the front row. Case, when, when you hear a number like 150% increase in ticket sales, season ticket sales from 2019, because there was no fans really last year, uh, to this year, what, what does that mean to you to, to have that kind of buy-in? Oh, it's, it's awesome. Anytime you can get fans in the stands, it's awesome. Because like I just said a minute ago, that positive energy is contagious, whether that's uh, guys on the team or just feeding off energy from the fans themselves on game day. So just having people there and, you know, creating that game, game day atmosphere again is going to be spectacular. We'll stay on the front row at the far end. Hey, Case, we talked about this earlier a little bit, but talk about how you are trying to be that guy for your team this year to pop, pop, uh, pop, pop your team up and that leadership that you're going to show all throughout the season. Uh, well, yeah, it's, it's up to me. I can't come in and have a bad day or a day where I'm low energy. Uh, I've got to come in and, and have a high, a high output every day and, and impact uh, everyone else on the team. So I, I'm a team leader. Uh, it's up to me to make sure we're all, we're all doing right. And I've got to be a shining example of how to come in and, and take care of your business. So I can't afford to have a bad day, and I always got to bring the juice. To your right again. I asked your teammate, to Kale, you know, who, who wins the one-on-one the -on -one battles in practice? He kind of laughed and, and said to ask you, so I'm going to ask you about that. But you're talking about the one-on-one -on -one battles between me and Akil? Uh-huh. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll say I win a lot, and he wins a lot, too. But he's a good player. I'm a good player. But, you know, we got another camp. I think this is our fifth camp playing against each other. So hopefully one of us can uh, take the lead on it this, uh, this fall camp. So. Yeah, two linemen start every game last year. Is that uh, a point of pride for the school? And you have 20 straight, straight starts. What does that mean to you? Um, honestly, I'm just, I just try to be consistent, um, consistent guy and be there and be where I'm supposed to be. Um, you know, smart guys get put on the field. I know what to do. I play hard. So um, just being there, being available um, for my guys and being able to play next to them for all those games in a row, it means something to me. So. Another question to your left. What's something that uh, none of us know about Akeel Byers? Nothing you know about Akeel Byers. He has a self-proclaimed nickname called Two Times. He calls himself Two Times. I don't really know of anybody who has ever called him that, but 
he claims it's because he's two times bigger than everyone else. But, I mean, I'm not really buying it. But, yeah, that's, you know, two times. I don't get it. You know, along that same thread, maybe something no one knows about Connor Bazelak, and mostly, though, you know, his growth from one season to the next. Connor Bazelak loves Luka Doncic. Like, it's weird, almost. But, you know, but it, it's been good to see him settle into his uh, quarterback role and really start to become a more vocal leader. And, uh, you know, like I've said earlier, he, he's been a guy who pushes people and he demands extra work, put, you know, do more than expected and stuff like that. So just to see him mature and, and really come into that role has been awesome. On your right again. You guys have a new opponent on your schedule this year, Texas A&M. Um, you know, what, what do you expect the Aggies to, to bring to Columbia this year? Uh, they're a good team, a good football team, no doubt about it. Um, so the more we get in depth on our film study and game planning, uh, I'll have a better answer then for you if I ever see you again. I don't know. But, uh, you know, they're a good team, and I, I give them a lot of respect. Uh, they're well coached, so I'm looking forward to the challenge. And we have them at home, so I'm excited to get to that week. But we got to play one week at a time and get through Central Michigan first and, and then on from there. But I am excited to play Texas A&M, no doubt. Back to your left here. What do you think of uh, Akil's decision to, to switch his number to number zero? Kind of an odd number. I think it makes total sense. He has zero sense. So number zero, that's <laughs> perfect. No, but uh, um, it's cool, I think. You know, to be able to, for us to be able to wear number zero, I think that's cool. Why is it offensive linemen are the best talking group on any team? I don't know, man. There's just something about those old linemen. They just, you can't deny it. It's something in us. I don't know. <laughs> Another question on your left. Can you just speak a little bit on this Arkansas with Ark rivalry? Excuse me, with Arkansas. You know, some people may not say it's you know the most well-known rivalry, but drink. You said in the other room. You know, it means a lot to this team and this group. Oh uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, since I can remember, I don't think that we've ever lost to them, so at least in recent memory. Um, but I think just with everything that kind of happened naturally with some of our uh, old coaching staff being there, I think you know, a lot of people try to play that and be like, oh, it's a huge rivalry now. But, you know, it means I think it means a lot to us, the fact that it's a trophy game, so it means a little bit more. Um, and the fact that there's some familiar faces on the other side, I think it just makes it pretty interesting. Again, to your left here, another question. Uh, so in the room next door, Coach was talking about, um, he was asked about OU and Texas and if he'd be looking forward to a new rivalry, and he shot that down following with what Natalie said about, we already have one with Arkansas. What is your opinion on them potentially joining the SEC? Uh, honestly, I don't know. I guess it would be cool, but, I mean, I wouldn't be around to play them, so I don't. But if you can't handle like a horns down gesture, I figure it'll probably be tough to play in this league. But, um, you know, I, I wouldn't be around to play him, so I don't know. I don't really have an opinion on it. Back to your right. You guys exceeded expectations last year, finishing third in the SEC East. Do you guys talk about, you know, this year taking that leap forward and, and knocking off Florida and Georgia at the top? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, last year we went – Five and five, so at the end they were average football team last year. So uh, not necessarily about those teams, but it's it's a more about us. We're trying to improve our game, improve our team as a whole, uh, so that we can you know go out there and win these games. And when you put in all this effort and all this off-season training, spring ball, fall camp, that just gives you an opportunity to get to game day. So that's all you can ask for is an opportunity and. What we do with it on any given Saturday is, you know, it's up to us. So all we can do is, is work for those opportunities, and the work that you put in will determine how well you use your opportunity every Saturday. To your left in the front row. Okay, so it seems like this game you guys have with Kentucky each year seems to be an important game. Last year, obviously, you know, a big one, one of your guys' first wins in a while over them. What kind of importance do you guys put on that game? You know. Second, you know, second week of the season heading to, you know, Kentucky. So kind of talk about that a little bit. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Kentucky's a hard-nosed football team. They, they've built their program off toughness and everything like that. So beating a team like that consistently is where we're trying to get to, beating the teams that are known as tough teams and gritty teams. So and having them week two I think is, is awesome. That's an early test for us, and it's on the road. 
Uh, they're a good football team, so I'm looking forward to the challenge and being able to play an SEC game early off in the schedule. I guess granted that we played every game in the schedule last year was SEC, but it being a normal season and having an SEC opponent that early, I think it's a, it's a great challenge for us and we'll kind of see where we stand. What's something uh, that we don't know about Coach Drinkwitz? Something you don't know about Coach Drinkwitz. Mm, I'm trying to think something or I won't get in trouble. Um, I don't know. He's a quirky guy. You all know him. Uh, he he's kind of acts similar with us as he does the media. He's pretty quirky and an interesting fellow, but uh, I don't know. I'm trying not to say nothing too crazy. I don't want to get in trouble, so or out him, you know, so how that goes. But I don't know. I have to think on that one, honestly, to give a good uh, publicly accepted answer. <laughs> We're going to go to the second row on your right. Hi, Case. You, ha you um, are in a leadership position here on the team. What type of advice do you have for the young guys that are coming on the season? Uh, just don't lose sight of uh, what you're here to do. And, and you know, uh, a lot of times guys get caught up and like, oh, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that. Just, man, you just got to trust it. You know, the team's going to take care of you and you do what you're supposed to do. Cream's going to rise to the top eventually. So just on, for young guys coming in, just trust the process. And I know that's pretty cliche. But, uh, you know, you just got to go in with blind trust because the coach has been doing this for a long, long time and they've been successful. So there's no reason not to trust them doing it. And you go in, you put the work in, and eventually you'll get repaid, whether that's team wins or personal success. I think they kind of go together, in my personal opinion. So just to kind of stay the course and don't get frustrated with, you know, something may not go your way or something like that. Do we have one more here on the left? This will be the last one. We've kept you long, but you're good. So. <laughs> You know, Drink was saying that Missouri is really a blue-collar community, and he said he felt like bringing you and Akil was really a statement and a message to them that, you know, we're a blue-collar team. Is, is that how you feel? Could you elaborate on that a little bit, you and Akil coming to media days here? Uh, absolutely. Uh, we, we come into work every day, uh, whether that's lifting or practice, something like that. We've got to have a blue-collar mentality because, uh, you know, we're not a flashy school. We're not known as, you know, powerhouse of the SEC. That's where we're trying to get to, but we got to come in with a blue collar mentality and a worker's mindset because that's what we got to do to, you know, have an opportunity to win. Like I said earlier, um, you know, you do all this off season work, training, film study, all that does is give you an opportunity, a chance to get to game day. When you get to game day, that's when it really happens because, you know, you see the work that you put in. You know, everyone's going to get to game day one way or another. No matter how much they've worked in the summer or the spring, they're going to get there. But what you do with your time and how valuable it's been is going to really show how you handle that opportunity on Saturday. So just coming in with that blue collar mindset every day, I think is going to pay big dividends for us this fall. Case, terrific job. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.